Hello everyone, thanks for uh, stopping by. Uh, what I want to do is kind of show you why I counter clip. This is actually a fun and fascinating topic that if you uh, go on Facebook or Board Game Geek and just do a search for counter clipping why, uh, you'll see there's lots of debate. There's Sometimes it feels heated, like why do you clip your counters? What does that mean? Why do you do it? So I thought I'd share why I do it and what that means. So I just got my Road Warrior module from Critical Hit and I want to play but all of my counters are trapped on this cardboard sprue. Now the counters are cut very well but they have nubs that connect them to the sprue. So I don't know if you can see that but there's, let me grab my knife here. So you got these little nubs that connect the counters to each other and then also can connect it to the sprue like in the corners here. And all of them connect at the corners. Alright, so first things first, you can just pop the counters out. Now when you pop them out, you sometimes end up with a counter like this. They end up with a beard. Let's see, trying to get you some light on the subject there. And so they'll end up with these corners that are kind of ripped, torn, have those tufts. And the tufts can be annoying for a couple of reasons. Let's see. I'm going to try and zoom in. If I can find the zoom button here. Alright, so with that, my map's not laying flat. I got all the maps stacked here. But what can happen, especially in a, a hex kind of game, Luckily, this is an area movement game, so I could probably fit quite a few things in here. But if you're playing with hexes, and your counters just barely fit the hex, what happens when you try to line stuff up, or you start moving things that are close to each other, those nubs start to collide. Also, if you have to do stacks, sometimes those nubs will keep your counters from stacking well. And that, that's hard to see here but um, you know without pulling the camera way down but that can sometimes affect your stack and then if I have a stack moving next to something with you know basically your things don't fit crisp together and on hex maps that can be a pain where you're trying to move something and fit them so it's just kind of you know a minor quibble for some but another thing though that I think is a little more serious, and, and I, I really wanted this to be a serious video, <laughs> so I apologize if you're thinking, well, this is a late April Fool's joke thing. No, this is, I really wanted to be serious about this. Uh, one thing that can happen is with these nubs, if you just pop these things off of the sprue, as that loses focus, is this over time can actually fray and start to separate, and then it starts to separate the layers of cardboard or separate the you know laminated picture from the cardboard and so that that can ruin your your physical counter as well so just popping these out works and you can play your game but uh, for some of us we do take that a little step further and so what you can do is I have my exacto blade so what I'll do is on the main corners here is all cut just to try to carefully cut the corners all right and then try to free these things try to get in here carefully and cut and I'm trying to keep this on camera there you go so that one's free and then we have this one here. And I got one more nub in this corner. All right. <clears throat> so I use my exacto blade. Oh, there's one nub here in the middle. Oh, come on. Normally I set this down, but I'm trying to hold this up so you can see it. Uh, cut. Alright. 
Now I've cut them away and that does actually just makes it a little bit easier now to work with. And you could, uh, from this point, you know, you could kind of bend and pull. You know, and technically your counter has been rescued and you can play with it. But, you know, you've got these corner nubs. And so then generally what I'll do then, let's see, move the map out of the way, is I can now lay these on the table or my cutting mat or whatever. And again, just kind of cut on the nub. Even if you don't cut all the way through, you can uh, kind of pre-cut it a little bit. And that way when you do kind of break it free, you lessen the nub a little bit. It just makes it a little bit easier to pull the counter off. You know, but if you can, just really work that blade. I think I need to get my, put a sharper blade on here. Yeah, I've, I've been cutting a lot of counters, so I probably need to put a new blade on here. But let's just say, f for argument's sake, right, you cut through, there we go, that one cut through. Let's see if this one will cut through. Obviously, you don't want to cut your counter. There you go. And then just get this last little nub. You know, and then hopefully, on the cut side at least, you get a little bit cleaner corner. All right, so just try to cut them, you know, I try to cut them out. Now, <clears throat> the corner, okay, so what do I do? Right, I, I know people that use toenail clippers, they use a CD case jig. So again, if you do a search on the internet, if you're curious what all those mean, uh, you can find images of that. And they also make some tools specifically for this. Well, one tool that I got, my wife got this for me a few years ago. Let me zoom out. This is a organ laminator, two and a half millimeter rounder, which was actually designed for cutting like ID security badges and things like that. Uh, but you can use these for counters and this one's pretty popular. And all you gotta do is take your counter, and this, this, I use this for all my games, so big counters, little counters, and give a little push. Give a little push. Give a little push, and one more. Let me just double check this one. All right, and so then, now that you've rescued the counter, from the uh, cardboard sprue and you corner cut those tufts so the hope and let me grab another one here let's do a side by side I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim one more here that had some tufts on it all right that's pretty good Okay, let me move this back and we'll zoom in one more time and just kind of take a peek here at the results. All right, so now here we've got an un uncut one and then you got two here side by side. Oh, look at all my cardboard. <clears throat> so the hope now is that you can see why I clip my corners. Uh, so I go from a counter that I pulled off of the cardboard sprue that's got these nubs and now you have kind of that clean cut professional look. And this is what a lot of companies are doing now is they're pre-rounding the corners on their counters. But the problem is for some of those companies is they then put the nub on the side of the counter. So when you pull the counter from the counter sheet you now have a, a nub. You still have a nub. It's just on the side instead of the corner so you can't trim it. I mean, you could, you can, I've sanded some down. But usually those nubs are really, really tiny. It's these ones in the corners that really bother people. And so that's why I trim them. And see now, if I have my hex game, I can line these things up right next to each other. They're not bumping. See, like if I put that right there, there's this big old gap because of these nubs. And so that makes it hard sometimes to line things up. Like I said, I know, for some people, that's a minor quibble depending on your game. Might not matter for an area movement game where it's not a hex but a huge, you know, three inch by two inch area. Um, but because I've gotten so used to doing it, 
you know, why wouldn't I give my soldiers a good haircut before sending them into battle, right? So we're doing basic training. All right, but there you go. I just wanted to take a moment and share with you kind of my process and my thoughts on why I do that. And I don't know if anybody else out there even cares or does that themselves or is against it. But for those who wanted to know why, I hope that explains why. That's it. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.